Hello, crumb bums. How are we doing on this fine, fine day? Sunny day. How are we doodling? Today, I'm going to be doing a good old fashioned super drug haul of sorts. I picked up some bits from Superdrug. I've actually used a couple of them because I wanted to use them before this video, but I used them on camera. So it's going to be kind of like a first impression sort of haul kind of thing. And in the interest of full disclosure, Superdrug actually gifted me um, some points on my Superdrug card to use to buy these bits. Um, but I did go the other day. I'm a Superdrug fiend. I'm a Superdrug fiend. So I did actually go the week before and I picked up a few bits as well. So I'm going to show you what I got today with the bits I've tried. I'm going to review and what I got the other week and vice versa ditto whatever the phrase is um but yes i'm just gonna jump straight on into it there are some things i wanted to show you that i actually really really recommend and i've bought before and i really recommend so um i guess i'll start with that i have been trying this razor from b by superdrug which is a semi-new launch and i really 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 like it in fact this is my one this is my one and I picked up another one. Basically, I use the Estrid razor because everyone and their mother and their sister and their brother and their grandmother and pretty much everybody on Instagram was being sponsored to promote Estrid razors. And whilst I do really like them in the in terms of the aesthetic and um, they're a really nice razor, they're really, really good. I found that the head went blunt quite quickly. If you haven't, I'll pop a picture of one here if you want to have a look at what it looks like. Because I have got one. I've got the pale pink one. They have like a subscription service. You can get the heads sent to you because um, you need to replace the heads after a while. And when I first used them, I really liked them because the strip on, you know, that kind of like gel strip was really, really gooey, which I love. Because if you've got sensitive skin, uh, especially to shaving, it's it can be a bit of a pain. And like, obviously you can use shaving gel and whatever, but that kind of strip can really, really help um to make sure that you get a really nice kind of shave without getting red bumpies so yeah i used it and i just found that the heads were so disposable like i went i was going through them quite quickly so i stopped my subscription and i picked this up and i love it this one i haven't changed the head yet and this one has last lasted me ages um and i did have laser hair removal so i don't have to shave that often but like some now and again i need to just shave and get rid of like the baby hairs and stuff on my legs um so yeah bear that in mind but this has lasted me a long, long time and I'm not going to change the head just yet, but I did pick up some refill heads for when I do need to do that. They sell these little refills so you can keep the same handle and just change the blade. Uh, next up, I picked up these microfiber cloths, potentially quite boring, but I thought they were really sweet. They were pretty affordable and I use my face, my face halo knockoffs most of the time, but these are so soft like ridiculously soft i think they're a new launch i haven't seen them before but they're by studio london which is a super drug own brand range and they are so soft um, and i just love the sort of size of these instead of having the little pad which i usually rub around my face i thought this could be could be quite a quick way of just sort of wiping my entire face and neck um could be more efficient who knows but i'll let you know how i get on with these i was thinking obviously pairing them with like a cleansing oil and using this to kind of wipe off the residue from the cleansing oil and the rest of my makeup speaking of cleansing oils i picked this up the other week when i went to Superdrug, and i thought i would just mention it so this is from their vitamin c range which i have previously hated on not gonna lie i just don't like how fragrance the range the fragrance the range is um but that's just because i have sensitive skin and i'm not especially when it comes to a cleansing oil like why do you need fragrance in a cleansing oil you're gonna wipe it off you're gonna it's not gonna stay on your skin you're gonna wipe it off so i wish this wasn't as fragranced but i actually think for an affordable cleansing oil it's all it's pretty darn good it's, it does the job it is the vitamin c radiant oil cleanser infused with vitamin c removes face and eye makeup brightens refreshes and softens and as you can see i have used it a good few times and it's a very thin um oil it emulsifies nicely and it wipes off nicely like i don't have anything bad to say about it. it apart from the fragrance the fact it's got parfum halfway down the ingredients list means it is quite fragrance that kind of like orangey mm, very orangey scent which i wish they came out with an unscented version of this because i think that would be great for people who are sensitive to fragrance but if you can handle fragrance you might really like this as a budget option and it's also like a nice little container as in it's not huge, you you could probably travel with this, it's 100 mil. Oh, another thing I picked up in the same trip the other day with my own monies, um, I picked up this because it reminded me a lot of the Inky List Salicylic Acid Cleanser, because it's got the same name, <laughs> and it's also got ceramides in, and it's a new release from Superdrug. And I love the Inky List Salicylic Acid Cleanser, but that one is always out of stock. Um, it's really good, and I definitely will end up repurchasing it, but I just thought maybe if, 
I think you get a little bit more bang for your buck with this one because this is 200 mil and I think it was like seven pounds whereas not sure about the milliliters on the inkyless one that'd be really impressive if I could remember that if I could rattle that off right now that would be very impressive but I can't <laughs> so I would say it's, it looks like a smaller bottle but I mean who knows um and that one is about £11, I think. So it's still really affordable, but this one's just a little bit more affordable. And I've used it a couple of times, but I don't think I've used it enough to, and, and sort of take a note of my skin up close, because mainly when I use these kind of cleansers, I notice that my sebaceous filaments and sort of blackheads around my nose aren't as prominent. It's it, That's what I like with the Inculus one. It really helps with that. So I need to actually focus on using this and see how it works. And I'll report back on this one, because I think that could be a really good slightly more accessible budget option because like I say the inky list one is budget friendly but it's hardly ever available because it's so popular oh and also I tried this overnight mask which I don't really like this is the I don't mind it but again it's quite fragranced and I don't really notice much about it with on my skin but it's a new range by Superdrug from their naturally radiant range but it's their naturally radiant glow in the pink packaging um I might I'll continue using this but it's an overnight just like a really sort of thick moisturizer um and i don't notice too much of a difference when i use this but i, I again i'm going to keep using it and i'll let you know it's supposed to have a prebiotic complex with skin's natural bi microbiome balancing prebiotic mm, i don't know sounds like a yogurt to me anyway back to today's shopping trip i picked up something from garnier because if you missed the news the exciting news of the month or was it has it been a month it must be more than a month by now, but Garnier are officially cruelty free. They are genuinely cruelty free, logical harmony approved, cruelty free, which feels so weird to say, but I actually thinking back now, I can kind of see that was happening for quite a while um, because they were coming out with loads of vegan formulas and they were calling them vegan. And I used to get really annoyed because I used to think, well, you're not vegan. You're not vegan because the product's not cruelty free. So how can you say a product's vegan if it's from a brand that tests or funds testing on animals just to retail in certain markets? So I can kind of see the point where they were trying to kind of push to go completely certified cruelty free, which is amazing. And I appreciate these things probably do take time. But yeah, I picked up a sheet mask from them because this is a new launch, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, new launch. And this was the only one I could see in store that was marked as vegan. I know they have lots of vegan products listed on their website, but I couldn't be bothered to go through and scroll through. So I just thought instead of getting the tissue kind of sheet mask I would just pick this one up because it says vegan in the corner but this is their niacinamide and pure sheet mask and I I wouldn't say niacinamide is like my favorite ingredient ever but I want to learn more about it I want to try and use it I used to find it broke me out when I used products that were high in niacinamide but we'll see I used this before doing my makeup today and it felt really nice you only leave it on for five minutes it's a full face sheet mask and um it seemed to absorb into the skin quite quickly in I've kind of put it back <laughs> I've put it back in the packet because I usually try and get a couple of uses out of these because I think they are quite wasteful um but I actually think it there's there wasn't there was a lot on it in terms of the serum but i feel like my skin absorbed most of it like it was pretty dry by the time i peeled it off so that's that one i'll let you know if it was any good but they also had another one which i think was like a watermelon one and they've got a couple of different options depending on what you're after for your skin um and then a couple of makeup bits i picked up so i tried this today this is the gosh bb cream which is supposed to be a foundation primer and moisturizer all in one spf 15 and i got it in the shade 01 sand um, and I will show the clip of me putting this on and then I followed it up with the B baking powder which I got in light um, so yeah I'll insert that clip now because I'm wearing them today so I picked up the gosh BB cream in the lightest shade gosh have a very limited shade range disgustingly bad shade range they'll go pretty fair and then they'll do slightly like fair light not even medium i don't even know if you could call it medium it's like a very fair medium and that's usually it so they do not have a very big shade range um my favorite bb cream at the moment if you do want one that's available at the drugstore and does have a jolly good shade range in terms of like the spread of colors they might not have every single tone matched but they have when you look at it on the shelf it has an equal spread of lighter shades to dark shades um, and that is the barry m fresh face foundation which i actually have used on my channel i used it in my valentine's day get ready with me video and at the time i wasn't really a huge fan of it because i, I want for that look i wanted something that was full coverage and i don't know why i went in with a bb cream when i wanted something that was full coverage but anyway anyway really enjoying that one i think it's a very very nice formula but this one like i say i think it only comes in three shades which is pathetic for want of a better phrase i got mine in the shade sand i feel like i'm already starting this off on a bum note because i'm so mad at the shade range but 
it's just so stupid and I think I brought I think this has been a topic of discussion before and someone said because it's a Danish brand it's a Danish brand Swedish brand Danish brand I think um because it's a Danish brand the, it, something about the fact that Danish people are white therefore they cater to white people which is very strange. I'm sure there are many, many, many Danish people that aren't white, but okay. Don't know who suggested that, but uh, somebody definitely has. I've definitely seen that before. Let's just talk about the formula of this product. That's the shade. Sorry, the light's coming through a bit weirdly because it's the afternoon and the sun's streaming through my window. But I'm just going to apply this. I've already got SPF on and I'm just going to apply it with my fingers, maybe going with a sponge. This does have really good reviews. I have to say when I was in the store, I was looking up some reviews on my phone as you do and it had solid five star reviews on the superdrug web website which i always trust way more than the own does anyone else have this i never trust reviews on a brand's website so i would never trust like gosh.com or gosh.co.uk their reviews because i know brands filter their reviews i know for a fact they filter their reviews for sure because when brands only want positive feedback they will do that but superdrug doesn't do that because it's like what would be the point i don't know they, they just don't do that because they have a load of if it's a product that's not very good it will have a two star review you know two star average and then lots of different poor reviews that pull the average down um but yeah does anyone else find that like you i just don't trust brands reviews because i used not a beauty brand but i used to work for a brand that definitely did that they would only put up reviews that were four or five star or like post reviews so they re they received all the reviews in the back end and then this is not on my blog or anything by the way it's made like beauty brand but i just know that it's a thing that goes on so i only trust when it's like a look fantastic review or like a you know like a cult beauty you know it's a brand that it's still a brand and it sells beauty products but it's not like their brand that's being reviewed does that make sense let me know if you do that as well i don't know if i'm just extra cynical in this day and age. I feel like it's giving me a little bit less coverage than the Barry M1. Uh, but the finish is really nice and natural. It hasn't really done, as you can see, it hasn't really done much. It's just sort of evened out my skin tone. I'm gonna go in with a concealer on top. My bedside table. This one, my favorite ever. This is the Revolution, Revolution Pro Ultimate Radiant Under Eye Concealer. The best of the best if you've got dry skin or mature skin or you just want something that's not matte and cakey but you still want coverage i really recommend this one comes in 14 shades probably available at superdrug actually my local superdrug doesn't have a revolution pro it only has makeup revolution if you don't know revolution have about a million different brands under their umbrella like unnecessarily many brands it gets a bit ridiculous um, they've got iHeart Revolution, they've got XX Revolution now, Revolution Pro, Makeup Revolution, Revolution Skincare. It is a bit bonkers. It really is. I think they're all made to sort of target different demographics, but it gets just a bit overwhelming. Um, I would say first impressions. I don't mind this BB cream. I don't think I like it quite as much as the Barry M one, but I will use it. And the fact that it's got SPF 15 is really good because the Barry M1 does not have any SPF in it. Not that I would trust this to give me full protection, but it's just like a nice little added bonus. I already have SPF 50 on and on my chest as well. Um, hence why it might look a little bit white. But um, yeah, that's that. It's fine. And I guess I will go in with the baking powder I picked up from B now as well. So this is, I think it's a new product. I haven't seen this on the B stands before. B baking powders are finely milled for an effortless effortlessly lightweight application which instantly mattifies blurs and helps your makeup stay put i will not be baking with this because i do not bake because i would look like a i would look like a creased fool like it would look so cakey and also it makes me sneeze i've tried to do it before and it just makes me sneeze i don't know why i couldn't tell you why but it, i think it's like the amount of product under my eyes just sort of irritates my eyes but i'm just gonna open this up i'm hoping this is nice i'm trying to think i haven't used powder in a while but moving into summer, I like to obviously set my face and my makeup last a little bit longer as I sweat. I got the shade light, the lightest shade. They also had a translucent one and some deeper shades as well. Just going to tap that on my face. Um, but I've been looking for an affordable powder. I love the RMS one, but that seems to oxidise a little bit on me these days. And I love, for a pressed powder, I love the Avril powders. 
they're quite similar to the Charlotte Tilbury powders. You know, the airbrush flawless filter, whatever they're called. Mm. Oxidized a tiny bit, I don't think you can see, but it looks okay. I just I don't know if you can see here, but it's just a tiny bit yellow. I think I added a little bit too much. It's not the worst I've tried though. Not the worst. So I'd say both of these I do quite like. Like this my skin looks pretty good in terms of it looks quite glowy. Um I feel like this is kind of matte but not flat. Kind of like it's it's taken away a bit of shine on my chin but it's not taken away any of like the sheen on my face in terms of like the natural glow and all that jazz. So yes, the jewelry's out on these two, but I thought I would just give you my first impressions. And I also picked something up from Barry M and I bought this thinking I would give it to my mum because she loves these kind of like pinky peachy shades. But then once I bought it, I realized it's a extreme lip plumper XXL, that swell lip gloss in the shade Swerve. So I thought, oh, maybe I'll test it before she tries it because I don't know if she'll like lip plumping lip glosses. Um, and I put it on and it felt really cheap. Like the, um, I don't know, it just smells really cheap and it feels really thin. It doesn't feel like thick and plumpy. And then about five minutes later, my lips were on fire. And I realised that it's not a limp, it's not a plumping lip gloss. It's not like a, just a really high shine lip gloss, like the Revolution Pout Bomb one. This is one of those ones that probably has chilli in it. And it's kind of like irritating your lips to make them look more plump and red. But I never really liked these kind of things. So I really wouldn't, uh, I personally would not buy this again. I wouldn't recommend it. But, and also it doesn't really have much of an effect in terms of the glossiness. Like my lips looked just as glossy before this. So yeah, a bit disappointed with this one. And it also has kind of like a synthetic strawberry taste to it and smell. So all round, a bit disappointing. Next up, I picked up this. Okay, this is from Barium as well. And I, I've been eyeing this up for a while and I kind of thought, should I, shouldn't I? It's a body foundation. And I feel a couple of different ways about body foundation. The first time I heard about body foundation was through, I think Jamila Jamil tweeted out about it because Kim Kardashian came out with body foundation. And I was kind of like, again, in two minds about it because I could understand from Kim's point of view, she has psoriasis and that's something that is quite hard to hide. I know it's quite hard to deal with for someone who has it that can be very self-conscious about it or if um someone has discoloration or kind of like a birthmark they might want to cover it up um in the same breath i was kind of like okay another thing you're trying to sell to us mainly because that family they do so much in terms of filtering their bodies they use filters on their tv shows they use airbrushing filters they use filters on videos to make their bodies look a certain way they obviously have plastic surgery obviously they have constant treatments and plastic surgery and cosmetic surgery and bbls and thread lifts and all this stuff and they're, they're trying to make it seem like a foundation a product that you can buy could get that for you um same as when they try and say oh do 100 squats and you'll get a bum like us it's like who are you kidding who are you, who is lapping that up apart from naive children that is that's the real question isn't it but anyway also my lips are on fire right now my lips are tingling tingling um anyway just to give a little bit of background i was not all for body foundations initially and then i kind of thought you know what there is a certain market for it because we do have discoloration on our bodies we i am continually bruised and i don't know where they come from i don't know if it's from a vegan diet i've read that sometimes vegans bruise quite easily it can be genetics it i don't know what it is but i i don't do a lot of like combative combative physical activity like i don't i don't play rugby i don't play like you know wrestling i'm not a jujitsu fighter and yet i'm continually bruised and i don't know what it is so i just thought if this can cover up a bruise or two on my body when i don't you know when i want my legs out and i want to feel confident then that was my thought process now i haven't actually used this maybe i'll use some of it now i'm intrigued as to whether it would come off on clothes to be honest it's supposed to be let me read you the front it says body foundation with vitamin e and aloe vera it's supposed to be a Blurring body foundation, an ultimate solution to flawless, perfected skin. Luxurious formula to provide a subtle bronze glow. Ideal for minimising the appearance of imperfections, revealing a radiant, even skin tone. I'll do it on my veins on my hand, see what this looks like. So that's what my veins look like. Not that there's anything wrong with having veiny hands, but let's just see what this would look like on my hand. And I do actually have one of these body brushes I should probably use. This is from e.l.f. I use this for my contour, but... That's what it looks like after. 
hasn't done that much has it it's just kind of like taken a little bit of a tint of the blue away um but yeah i don't know if i added enough i'm gonna have to actually try this properly on some bruises and see what it looks like um because i feel like this will be a now and again kind of thing i'm not going to put this all over my legs all the time but yeah that's that one let me know if you've tried this and let me know what you think and then i picked up a couple of bronzing products because i feel like i haven't quite nailed my gradual tanning routine because i love the la vera one that i've mentioned on my channel before i feel like that one is really really nice for a gradual tanner um oh my lips are in th my lips are hurting right now like this uh, i don't recommend this like my lips are tingling to the extent that they actually really hurt i really don't like this at what cost at what cost do we want red irritated lips i don't get that at all but Anyway, I love the Levura Gradual Tanner and I'm also trying one from Tropic, which I really like, but I kind of also want to have a, I want to have a higher end one that I can use when I want to be bougie, but also maybe one that I can alternate that's a bit more affordable. So I saw that Superdrug have reduced the B Gradual Bronze Gradual Tanning Lotion to 99p. Low key, I think they might actually be discontinuing this range. That's a conspiracy theory that has not been confirmed. I do not speak on behalf of Superdrug, but I think that's the case. And I'll tell you for why. I think it's because the, the range they had before this, the gradual tanning range, um, it was just called Build Me Up Tan, which I absolutely love. And I talk about at every single opportunity because they discontinued it and it was the best thing in the world. And I'm thinking maybe this is the same formula, but I'm guessing maybe not, because why would they... I don't know I think I think it's probably a different formula but um, I thought for 99p I may as well try it I don't know if this is on its way out because the whole range was 99p which I'm pretty darn sure it was kind of like £2.99 £3.99 sort of prices so I don't know but let me know if you've tried this I have tried a couple of things from this range which I really don't like like their um, tanning drops my lips are actually making me want to sneeze because they're stinging <coughs> they're stinging so much that it's making my nose tingle <laughs> This is just a disaster, isn't it? But yes, I will put some of this on now and just let you know how it feels on the other leg. It smells kind of coconutty. Feels kind of similar to the Build Me Up tan, actually. Am I stupid? Have they just discontinued the Build Me Up tan just to rebrand it? It doesn't smell the same. It doesn't, it smells really nice, but it smells like coconut. It doesn't smell the same. But it feels really, really good on the leg. How, am I an idiot? Am I an idiot? Have I been complaining all this time and they've just switched the smell and the packaging of their old gradual tanner? Am I an idiot? I have a feeling I'm an idiot. I'll have to wait until this develops into a tan, but can you please let me know if you use this? And especially if you've tried Build Me Up Tan before, with the one they discontinued a few years back, because I feel like maybe I'm an idiot. In fact, I definitely think I, you know what, TBC, watch the space and I'll update you on this one. Because if it is 99p, I am stocking up because if, if it's on its way out, why do they keep doing this? Why do they keep discontinuing things? I get so confused. When you make a smashing product, why would you discontinue it? I don't make it make sense. And then the last tanning product I picked up is actually not a gradual tanner. This is an instant tan. It's by Bondi Sands and it's their Glow Matte One Day Tan Instant Wash Off Flawless Tan for Face and Body. This I picked up for days where I haven't gradual tanned and I... I haven't been prepared. I feel like if I'm, you know, going out and I want to just wear a dress and I want to feel really confident and have some bronzed legs, then um, this might come in handy. I did use this today and it was really nice because it's a completely matte finish. It gave a really nice even colour. It also blurred the skin really nicely. I'll have to keep trying it to let you know how it um, looks. But so far, so good. I think this could be a really good option for that. You didn't seem to need too much to cover quite a lot of surface area and I just used it with my hands if you should probably use a mitt but hey ho like i say i'm testing out a couple of tanning products and i will probably do a tanning video in summer to let you know my favorites because i'm definitely more of a gradual tanning fan because it's so hassle-free you just do it when you're supposed to be moisturizing your body and yeah you know there's no need to use a mousse or anything but i am testing a couple of mousses as well so i'll update you on that as well um and then next up i'm nearly nearly at the end now but superdrug have released these extra oh god i nearly dropped this one <laughs> And then he went flying. Superdrug have released these two, uh, three actually, there's three in the range, extracts hair masks. And I did pick up with my own monies. I'm trying to make it completely clear what I bought and what Superdrug gifted me. But the other day I picked up the marshmallow one, which is the pink 
Pink Clay Marshmallow 3-in-1 Hair Mask Restoring. And then today I picked up the Watermelon and Mint Moisturising for normal hair. And then the Banana one for dry hair. This one's supposed to be for dull hair, I think. Yeah. So they're different, sort of like targeting different things. But they all smell really good. If you're looking for a dupe for the Body Shop Banana Mask, I don't know if this is. I don't know if the formula is as good as the Body Shop one. Smells exactly the same. I feel like that's probably what they were going for with this range. But I have tried this one many a time in the time. I probably use it too much, actually. I feel like maybe my hair needs a bit of a hair mask break. But I love this one. I used it for the first time and I was shocked at how soft my hair felt. Like, actually shocked. I couldn't stop. I got it. I was like, feel my hair. Feel my hair. It's so soft. It's a really, really softening hair mask. Did it? get rid of flyaways and frizz i can't really remember all i remember is just intense softness so i'll have to keep testing this one and i'm excited to try these two as well and they're actually marketed to um be used as a kind of like finishing sort of like you can a leave-in conditioner i was trying to remember the word a leave-in conditioner or you can use it as a hair mask so you can either just put a little bit on dry hair you can use it as a conditioner or you can use it as a hair mask so that's those ones and i have actually tried i picked up the other day the garnier uh, banana hair mask which everybody raves about and unfortunately i didn't love it i actually am not too impressed with garnier's hair care products i tried a few of they sent me some of their shampoo bars which so far not so good but mainly because they are really fragranced these are fragrance as well by the way but i don't tend to put hair masks right on my scalp so it's it's fine for me because i just put it from here downwards i don't really it doesn't really touch my scalp so it doesn't really touch my skin but yeah side note these do have fragrance in but the shampoo bars i tried from garnier were really scented and they just really irritated my scalp so unfortunately i didn't love the banana hair mask from them either so hopefully this one will be more of a winner and then the last thing i bought today is actually not in the packet or is it in the packet let me see i put these on earlier and i was so excited for these press on nails they're by the brand impress and at the moment as you can see i've got nothing on my hands so can you guess what happened answers down below they all popped off i think it was my fault because i put them on and then i realized oh i want to wash my hands so i washed my hands with some warm water and then they all started popping off so i think i maybe melted the glue but it was only warm water so i don't know what happened there but they are these pale pink nails with these kind of glittery accent nails um and they looked really really nice and they were not too long which i really liked maybe that was just my bad because um, I think you're just not supposed to wash your hands with warm water until they've completely set. But what I liked about these is there's no glue involved. You just peel a bit off of the nail, press it on, and you're good to go. If they actually work and stay on your nails, that would be a brilliant concept. But if the fact that there's no glue involved means that they are just very weak and they come off really easily, that's a waste of money. So I will try and use these. Maybe I'll peel off the back and then I'll put some glue on it as well because I do have some nail glue. But yeah, that was that one. And that was the last thing... And I picked up of late. So I really hope this was enjoyable, this little sort of mini roundup review haul kind of thing. Uh, just like old times, just like old times. Let me know what your favourite product from Superdrug is down below. Um, I just, I love them as a brand. I was actually watching um, Glow Up last night, which is a show on BBC. I don't know if you guys watch it, but it's kind of like Bake Off, but it's with makeup. They have 12 people who really want to become MUAs and they have tasks. They have like two tasks each week and they're slowly eliminated and the winner gets a uh, contract being an MUA for like loads of different brands and you know fashion houses and stuff so um it's really really good but the first episode was about um a campaign for Superdrug and they had the head of marketing from Superdrug and the theme was like diversity so I think they were using lots of different um products the Bee own brand range and they were just trying to um come up with images come up with looks that are striking um and would kind of convince people to come into the shop and then they like compared the, the resulting photographs some of them were awful some of them were really really good but some were just not great it's a really good show but it was just really cool to see Superdrug on there I feel like they've been championing vegan products for ages and they've been pushing um more so than other brands like pushing um inclusivity and diversity diversity and it was really good and they on the show they've actually started including people's preferred pronouns in you know kind of like when you they do the cutaways in Bake Off and they, it comes up with the person's name at the bottom now they're including people's preferred pronouns which I thought was really cool I wasn't expecting that from BBC but here we go here we are so yes um anyway I love Glow Up I really recommend it I love Superdrug I really recommend it and if you want to see some more from me please do subscribe I really appreciate it and I hope you guys are doing well and treating yourself kindly and hopefully i'll see you very soon bye